Hi Math 65. This is the video for lesson 71, which is um, for Monday, February 1st. It's located on page 365 in your big textbook. Before we start the lesson, be sure that you've completed time test C, which is on page 147 in your test and worksheet book. The practice problems for lesson 71 are located on page 367. Um, so with that said, if you haven't done the time test, go ahead and do that and stop the video, go ahead and do that and then come back, okay? So lesson 71 is gonna deal with fractions, decimals and percents. So if you have the fraction pieces that y'all's were paper, but I'm gonna bring out mine, I would recommend stopping the video and going and getting your fraction pieces that we cut out, they were with investigation two and three in the fall semester. And they had on them particularly like the fraction, the percent, and the decimal for each fraction piece. Go get all of those, because um, those can help you with this lesson quite a bit, okay? So with that, let's get started. If we look at the fraction one half, 50%, and 5 tenths. And we are asked to write it all as a fraction. This is where the fraction pieces come in handy because even though mine are a little, mine are look different than yours, hopefully you can see on mine I wrote what is written on your fraction pieces. So each of these fraction pieces are equal to one half that is the fraction it's equal to, 50% is the percent that it's equal to, and 5 tenths is the decimal that it is equal to. So if we use that to write these numbers as fractions, if that is our instruction here, 50%, okay, when we look at the word percent, per means of, and remember when we see the word C-E-N-T, we think of like pennies and centuries and all those things and know that that means 100. So any percent is written as a fraction. Well, one half was already a fraction, so I just copied that down. Okay, let me start with that. But any percent of 100, so the denominator on your fraction for a percent is always going to be 100. And the numerator is 50. Okay, now if we have to write, coming over to this one, if we have to write 5 tenths as a fraction, we need to listen to what the place value tells us. This 5 is in the tenths position. So therefore that tells us what our denominator is. So I come down here and I know I have, I'm in the tenths for my place value, 5 tenths. So now I need to write my numerator will be 5. Now, if we look at each of these fractions, remember, ring back to, with our fractions, any fraction that the numerator is one half of the denom denominator, the fraction is equal to one half. I'm gonna write over here, numerator, to remind us which one is on top. Numerator is on top, denominator, den denominator, and down, start with D, so I think denominator is down. That's how I remember it. Any fraction where the numerator is half of the denominator is equal to half. So let's look at 50 is half of 100. So 50 hundredths or 50 over 100, 50 hundredths is equal to one half, okay? Now I look at this fraction, I have 5 tenths. I know that five is half of 10, so this fraction is equal to one half also. And if I look at my fraction pieces and bring those back on the screen, I can see that one half is equal to 50% also, and it's also equal to 5 tenths as a decimal and as a fraction. This is the same exact number as a decimal and as a fraction, and both equal one half of my circle, okay? So we're gonna use that information 
to write fractions and decimals and percents today. All right, so in your book on page 366, there is if you, a little chart here that will help you with, if you don't have your fraction pieces with you, it tells you these little pieces are the pretty much the same as your fraction pieces. One half is 50% is 5 tenths. So the fraction, the percent, and the decimal is written for each of these right here. We're going to use that to work on this activity here. Again, I'm at the bottom of page 366. The whole page looks like that, okay? So I'm gonna start down here at number one. Use your fraction manipulatives or refer to the figures above to help you answer these questions. So it's telling you you can use these up here to help you if you don't have your pieces of paper, okay? Now, it says, if you fit three one quarter pieces together, which would be equal to one quarter plus one fourth plus one fourth. Remember, fourth is equal to a quarter. When I say one quarter, that's the same as one fourth. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth, you have what fraction of a circle? One A. So let me get my fourth pieces to show it here. So it says I take one fourth plus one fourth plus one more one fourth. Now what fraction of a circle do I have? I have one fourth, one fourth, one fourth equals three fourths. So one A, if I come to my paper, one A, I would say is three fourths. Now using the same setup here, it's asking me what 1B, my question following on page 366, 1B, what percent of a circle? Well, so for B, I know that each of my fraction pieces here tell me that it's 25%. So 25% plus 25% is 50%, plus another 25% is 75%. Percent And C asks me, what decimal part of a circle? So this one, I know one piece is 25 hundredths. So I can add if 25 hundredths and line up my decimals, 25 hundredths and 25 hundredths. Let me bring that on screen, okay, and get my answer. 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 5 is 15. Carry my 1 forward. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 7. Bring my decimal straight down. 0, 0, 0 is 0. So my decimal part of a circle would be 75 hundredths. Okay? Which if we look at that, 75 hundredths, if I was to write that as a fraction, it would look like, what would my denominator be? Well, I'm in the hundredths spot, so my denominator, it would be 100, and my numerator would be 75, okay? Which also, if I wrote this as a, if I wrote my 75% here as a fraction, my denominator, we said percent means of 100, so 75 out of 100, that would be my fraction for 75%. Okay, so 3 fourths is equal to 75% is equal to 75 hundredths. All three of those represent this part of my circle. That is the fraction piece. This part here is the percent piece. And this part here is the decimal piece that all represents the same part of the circle, okay? So number two is more of the same, except it wants you to take your one-fifth pieces and your one-tenth pieces. 
I'm not gonna do that one with you because it works the exact same way. You add up your fraction pieces, you add up your percentage pieces, and you add up your decimal pieces to get that, okay? But let's move on to number uh, three. Number three says in your book, I'm on page 367 now, they pull the book on screen, get number three on here. If you divide right here, 100 by three, what mixed number is the quotient? If you divide 100 by three, okay? So I'm on number three, page 367 now. All right, so my question says, if you divide 100 by three, so it's 100 divided by three would be what my problem looks like. What mixed number is the quotient? Remember the quotient is the answer to a division problem. All right, we have the dividend, the divisor is three and the quotient. So I'm gonna set that up over here in a division box, okay? Three being my divisor, goes on the outside. Remember, it's like scissors. That's what's cutting the number. 100 goes inside my box, okay? And I'm looking for my answer. So this we have done before. And we know our problem says, what mixed number is the quotient? So we know already our quotient, our answer, is gonna be a mixed number. So let's start. Okay, so we can start with 10. 10 divided by three is three times. Three times three is nine. Step three is subtraction. 10 minus nine is one. Step four in division is bring down. So we're gonna bring down our zero. Okay, so now we have a new division problem. We go back to the top and divide. 10 divided by three is three. Multiply for step two. Three times three is nine. Subtract for step three, and we have one. Now, I don't have anything else to bring down. So, as we learned last semester, you can take your remainder over your divisor to make a mixed number. So, put my one over three to make a mixed number. And your mixed number would be 33 and a third. So, on 3A, when it says, let's see, this would be A, what, uh, if you divide 100 by three, what mixed number is the quotient? Well, the answer would be 33 and one third would be your answer. Now, it wants you to pull your one third fraction manipulative, your one third fraction piece, and it wants you to look at it, okay? So I pulled mine. In the question for 3B on page 367 says, what percent is printed on the one-third fraction manipulative? So this is my one-third. What percent is on there? And the percent on there for B is 33 and one-third percent. So when we divided 100 divided by three, we got 33 and a third. And the percent for the one-third piece is 33 and one-third. That is how they determined that number. Okay? Because remember, if we, well, that is just one-third of the whole piece. Okay? So that is where your fraction pieces will come in handy for you. All right. So let's look at some more. Um, so let's look at number four. I'll get a clean sheet of paper to work with. Number four on page, still on page 367. Right here. If you divide one million by three, what digit repeats in the quotient? Okay, well let's go do our division down here. Number four on page 367, okay? So I have 1 million divided by three. So I need to set that up in my fraction box. It's a lot of zeros to write and put my three as my divisor. So let's start in. 
And we'll start with 10 divided by three is three. Three times three is nine. 10 minus nine is one. Bring down, bring down this zero. My new division problem is also 10 divided by three is three. Three times three is nine. Subtract and I get one. Bring down my next zero. Okay, 10 divided by three is three. Three times three is nine. Subtract and I get one. Bring down my next zero. Do you see a pattern here? 10 divided by three is three. Three times three is nine. Subtract and I get one. It's very important you stay organized to keep these zeros in line so you know when to stop. So 10 divided by three is three. Three times three is nine. Subtract and I get one. And I have one last zero to bring down here. Okay, so 10 divided by three is three. Three times three is nine. Subtract and I get one. Okay, so I'm gonna stop for a second. And my question that I'm answering says, if you divide one million, so I'm on 4A, page 367. Read with me, if you divide one million by three, what digit repeats in the quotient? And what digit is that? That is three, right? So our answer to that would be three. Now, that's A. Now let's look at 4B, okay? What decimal number is written on the fraction one-third manipulative? Well, let's go back and pull that back on screen. This is my one-third piece, and my question is asking me, what decimal number is written on the one-third manipulative? And if I look at that, it has three-tenths, 0 0.3, three-tenths, and it has this bar over it. So I'm going to write that as that answer with the bar over the three. Then you ask, 4C kind of asks what I'm about to tell you about. 4C says, what's unusual about the way this is printed, the way that decimal is printed? Well, what's unusual about it is this bar, okay? What that bar means for 4C is that this digit, the three, repeats over and over and over and over, okay? So the short way to write that is to just write one of the threes with a bar over it. And that lets people know that it's just gonna keep going and repeating and repeating and repeating. So that's what's unique about that, okay? Now let's look at, still on page 367, number five. So if you divide 1,000 by eight, oops, I'm, I'm, I don't have that on screen for you, I'm sorry. I'm up here reading, let me turn my camera. There we go, up here, sorry about that guys. If you divide 1,000 by eight, what is the quotient? Well, let's come down here and work number five. Okay, so 1,000 divided by eight. And we want to know the answer. So let's start. So we start with 10. 10 divided by 8 is 1 time. 1 times 8 is 8. Subtract 10 minus 8 and get 2. Bring a 0 down. Now I start my new division problem. 20 divided by 8 is 2. 2 times 8 is 16. Subtract and get 4. 20 minus 16 is 4. Bring down my next 0. My new division problem is 40 divided by eight is five. Five times eight is 40. Subtract and I end up with zero. So I have 125 as my quotient. So 5A is 125. 5B here asks me, what decimal number is printed on the 1 eighth fraction manipulative? So get your 1 eighth fraction piece here. Let me zoom in on mine because it might be a little hard to see. So 5B, what fraction, excuse me, what decimal number is printed on the 1 eighth fraction manipulative? And that decimal number is, we read this as 125 thousandths because the five is in the thousandths place value. So that decimal, and we see the we see 
here on our quotient, both 1,000 divided by 8 was 125. Our decimal for 1 eighth is 125 thousandths. So on C, 5C, it asks us what percent is printed on the 1 eighth fraction manipulative. Well, let's come down and look at it. And on the fraction manipulative, it is 12 and a half percent. So 12 and one half percent. Another way to write that would be 12.5% because we know 0.5 tenths is what, the same as one half, okay? So then you can also, so that is how they've determined, they've changed it from percents to, excuse me, percents to decimals to fraction pieces. Let's look at some comparisons and you can use your, um, Fraction pieces, if you need to, that's fine. But look at these comparisons here. <clears throat> and let's look particularly at number seven. Okay, I'm gonna write on my page down here and work out number seven. This is the one I'm on, seven. Okay, and this one is 25 hundredths compared to three tenths with a repeating bar. So I always say when we compare decimals, this is going back a few lessons, when we compare decimals, we need to make the same number of decimal places. So this one has one, two decimal places. This one only has one. So we need to make it two decimal places. So in this case, this one's already there. So I'm just gonna copy that down. Now this one, instead of putting a zero at the end, I know that this real decimal looks like this, just threes forever and ever, right? So I'm just gonna take two of those and put that down, okay? So I have two decimal places, but because of that repeating bar, I'm not gonna put zeros, I'm gonna put the three because I know that three repeats and repeats and repeats. Now I can compare 33 hundredths compared to 25 hundredths. So I know that 25, is less, 25 hundredths is less than, okay? That's all I'm doing. Let's look at number nine, okay? Number nine, I have 50% compared to 33 and a third percent. So even if I took off the percents and just compared the numbers on this, I can, because they're both in percentages. So they're in a same, um, units. I know that 50% would be greater than 33 and one third percent because they're in the same units. I can just compare 50 to 33 and a third. 